Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series, facilitated by renowned educators. ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. The one we're going to look at um, tonight is the inclining uh, and uh, declining wedge. And I really I have an example of a of an inclining wedge, but this pattern has actually been uh, uh, quite interesting because it's something that you've seen all over the markets as of late. You know, um, as prices sort of have uh, in in you know sort of all the major markets have made their moves to the downside, you've seen a lot of these wedges forming, and um, really. What we're looking at this the wedge is doing is slanting towards the prevailing trend, and um, a bullish wedge will slant downwards. A bearish wedge is going to uh, slant upwards, and they they actually uh, quite often call um, bearish wedges bear traps. And the idea is that as I sh when I show you this example uh, coming up, is that it tends to draw people into the market with a renewed sense of confidence that um, that things are moving you know to higher highs, and now's the time to get in, and so on and so forth. But really. What the market is doing is just bringing uh, all the bulls in so that they can clean their clocks on a continued move to the downside. Um, and uh, you've seen that actually happening in your major indices, uh, particularly in your S&P. And uh, as I'll show in a, in a couple of minutes, we can see it happening on a bigger picture in the YUK. But um, you, uh, you can see these uh, also um, at uh, tops and bottoms as uh, reversals as well. And they usually actually take a little while to form. So, um, but but generally, you know, no no longer than um, than than about three months. And so, just a sort of a quick little uh, diagram. Um, our bearish wedges, as you can see, slope. Uh, we've got a, a declining market. We've got a wedge sloping uh, upwards. Generally, your lows get higher faster than your highs do. So when you draw your trend lines in place, um, you get this wedge taking place. And of course, uh, it, it essentially tightens into an apex. Now, very conservatively, you're going to look at a pivot point as um, as your entry, just as we have been with all of our other sort of trade entries. And um, you're going to target, uh, just as prices begin to move, uh, in this case, to the lower lows, you're going to start to target these, uh, these lower pivots. Um, in the uh, in a bullish uh, uh, wedge, you're you're essentially looking at an inclining market, a price consolidation taking place where your lows uh, are getting lower faster than your than your highs. So if you think about it, really what's happening is the market is not quite as willing to take it down uh, as fast as these highs, and so you get this wedge taking place. Of course, it forms an apex, and conservatively we look for a breakout uh, here. An example on a on a weekly chart is what we've been seeing happening on the YUK. Now, again, you have to remember that on a on a weekly chart, we actually looked at a daily chart and you can see that that the price action is a lot more erratic. But in the bigger picture on the uh, on the YUK, the US versus the yen, um, you know, really, uh, what you're looking at here is essentially what we've just suggested. And you see prices actually trading into uh, into higher highs, so your 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 lows are getting higher. But we have to look at what's happening with our highs, and essentially uh, we can see here that they're not sort of uh, moving as aggressively to the upside. Now, if we were to put a fib retracement uh, on here, which is um, I believe there's a recording uh, of that available in in the ISE archives, and definitely a topic for an upcoming webinar. But you'll see that generally these wedges tend to trade into these fib retracement levels. Um, another sort of thing that you can look at is down on your MACD with that whole concept of, uh, of uh, divergence where you've, you have highs taking place. And so you might be listening to analysts on TV saying, wow, we're moving into higher highs and you know the, 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 the bear trend may be over, so on and so forth. You know that you can look at that pattern and say, well, I'm going to be cautious because these new highs are being made. But there's there's a little bit of hesitation um, according to my MACD, so I'm just going to wait and uh, and and see what uh, you know transpires. Again, sometimes it's better to sit on the sidelines than uh, than go and jump aggressively on an opportunity and run the risk of uh, of losing uh, your capital. I mean, again, it's all about probabilities. 
uh, if we look at this particular uh, situation here, you can see that our MACD is actually starting to cross over, and uh, our RSI has actually dropped below that 50% uh, level. So we actually trended up in to this 50% uh, zone here, but we rejected off of that. So again, if we anticipated this uh, as being sort of a continuation to the upside uh, on the bigger picture, we have to acknowledge that there's some conflicting signs in our lower indicators. And if this is all about probabilities and if we want to see everything lining up, then you know when we start to break down our analysis, if, if A plus B plus C plus D does not equal uh, a trade, then we don't take the trade. If, if we, uh, again, if we start to put our, um, our other um, uh, you know, ideas in place, you can go back and look at your previous pivot point here and then start uh, on a break of that, start targeting um, you know, uh, previous support levels to the, uh, to the downside. But remember, uh, this is actually on the bigger picture. I think today uh, we see ourselves trading back up into this, uh, into this range uh, here. If I just uh, have a quick look, yeah, we're, we're actually trading uh, in and around the, uh, I believe we closed about 10, uh, 105 and a half. So we're actually trading right here presently. But if this is going to continue to the upside, again, remember, we need to see that break of the pivot point. So, um, you know, always be sort of looking at it from all, all angles. And if things aren't lining up, then, then just uh, stand aside. Hey, Jace, question yep. for you. What sure. happens if you saw a weekly, I mean, even this kind of chart is yep. pretty bearish through the long term and that your daily is really bullish? What do you do there? Well, uh, you know, again, it, it all goes back to, to your support and resistance levels and, and recognizes, recognizing that, okay, if on the bigger time frame things look relatively bearish, we can actually get in and take advantage of, um, of a short-term opportunity. Uh, you know, for, for all you spot market FX traders, um, you know that during the course of a day, uh, even though maybe the, the – um, the overall trend of, say, the U.S. dollar has been up as of late. There have been opportunities on the short time frame to take some some moves to the downside. So think about it in that context as well. That you know, if I was looking at a consolidation here, for example, on my daily chart, um, I could conceivably jump in and and actually really take advantage of a nice move on uh, you know by buying some call options by targeting this level in here, but I have to look at that big picture and say to myself, well, you know what, this 110 represents a very significant resistance level. Uh, I'm going to be very cautious. I'm going to manage my position more closely, although short term we may have a, a bullish uh, uh, test of that uh, resistance level on the bigger picture. Uh, we may be just sort of forming what's, you know, what we talked about, which is, a, which is a double top lining up to the downside. So. Um, Use the support and resistance levels of the particular time frame that you're trading. And if you put all your rules in place that we've talked about uh, tonight, then you, know, uh, you can essentially take, take part in, in any of these opportunities, provided that you're managing, uh, you're, you're managing your positions as the market is moving either in your favor or, uh, or against you. Um, so hopefully that kind of answers your question. So uh, this yep. is designed as an example, but if you guys are interested in sort of as a, as as we mentioned um, on a on a weekly or a or a day sorry in a day to day perspective, then the ISC uh, FX uh, weekly outlook is is great because you know what what we do is we identify these key areas on a daily chart and and you know we'll we'll look at the probabilities of say a consolidation at a support and suggest that hey you know if prices stay in this range. Maybe this is a good opportunity to get in and buy some call options, but we're always cautioning that we could meet with, um, you know, a possible rejection, you know, uh, three to four points higher. So be cautious when entering these positions. So, again, it's just about identifying these levels before you enter, and then trading off of those as, uh, as you know, as you manage your your position. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.